Uh, Dan, what are we talking about? <laughs> so, yeah, um, uh, as is uh, our way of late, um, not not the most prepared uh, feature, but I do have a little game which we'll get to to oh. share with everyone that Adam doesn't have any idea about. But yeah, I wanted to talk about yeah commu- community um, and kind of le- the the power of community for. Uh, game growth um, and it's kind of this was inspired by one of the recent updates that we did to gamemarketingcampaigns.com um, which is a website shockingly about game marketing campaigns what we, what we try and do is just distill or curate uh, summaries of some of the most interesting games marketing tactics campaign strategies and things like that and one of the ones we added recently was um by kind of covered among us by Innersloth, uh who you know huge game uh, and really interestingly born again as we were talking about with omno born out of a very small team um and has gone on to huge successes not dissimilar again to four guys which we've also mentioned and um, and yeah we within that article which you can find easily on the on the website Kind of got a little bit of stats and some of the huge numbers that the games achieved. Uh, and Victoria Tran, who is the community manager for Innersloth and Among Us, she's been very kind of open and generous with some of the strategies and things like that. Um, and so, yeah, I guess I've just been wanting to just revisit community. It's one of my favourite subjects, as long-time viewers will know. Um, and yeah, just throw around some observations uh, and comments in that world. Um, yeah, one sounds of the, good. One of the one of the sort of things that we talk about is the there's a distinction uh, between community growth and community engagement, uh, and that's kind of one of the points that comes out from this inner sloth piece and and further reading on on Victoria Trand's writing there is the the growth aspect of the inner sloth community uh, or the the Among Us community. It, it, it happened over a long time, but it was also sort of very organic. The, the game existed on mobile, the game then released to PC, and it had kind of been out in one form or another for a good couple of years before it blew up. Um, and I think it was sort of engagement on by streaming and streaming presence that really rocketed it. Um, and, and that's interesting from a, I guess, a, a community engagement perspective, because all of a sudden you're now handling a large community whereas perhaps before they were working on growing a community through various means measures and means um have you have you, uh, have you seen much of the among us uh, community either social media or check out the discord or any any of these things yeah i mean unfortunately i read reddit uh, so <laughs> one of the side effects of being on reddit especially last year was that among us memes were inescapable um, the game had a really strong mimetic quality, like people really took to these little, you know, spacemen characters, the little jelly bean spacemen, and, um, and started adding them to all sorts of memes and talking about things being sus, uh, which was obviously a vocabulary that existed before the game, but that really became associated with the game. Um, and really entered the kind of lexicon of, of a whole generation of players, really, in, in terms of everyone who was playing Among Us. Um, the folks at home can see a little bit of me playing Among Us now in the background, got some B-roll yeah. playing. Look at that. Um, we didn't even plan this, did we? <laughs> I'm just prepared for everything. Name a game, I'll play you a clip of it, probably. Don't do that, because I, <laughs> no. I have like five clips. I've lucked out here. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. You, meant, you mentioned Reddit and, and memes. That was very much a part of the the strategy for uh, Among Us, which was very much about uh, recognizing and amplifying the community activity. So the, the fan art and memes, and um, just really kind of seeing it, recognizing it, and and rebroadcasting it, which which helped hugely. Um, I, one stat that that's that was mentioned um, that I saw the. They didn't actually have a Twitter account to begin with, um, so they had so their presence on Steam and uh, obviously streamers were picking it up. And I think it was tw- so, some point in the journey they created their Twitter presence, and they grew to a million followers in a month, uh, which is this kind of I guess 
a different challenge to uh, what many games are faced, which is trying to grow from zero. They obviously weren't starting from zero in, in that space, but it, it was also testament to how well they they handled, handled and managed um, that. And and to kind of follow on from that, they then launched a TikTok account a couple of years later or, or, or a while later, and they got to a million in 19 days on TikTok. So yeah, um, yeah, really impressive uh, kind of moving of audiences, which is another another consideration uh, in in kind of community management is do you want all your eggs in one basket? Um, and we, we often talk about different platforms, different channels as different audiences, and often it's not. You very much can move an audience between one platform to another, and I'd say that's kind of once you reach a certain there's a tipping point where you you don't want to spread your attention too thin and you want to be focusing on growing your audience in your preferred channel or you know sort of keep keep your keep focused but at a point you it's i think there's a very sensible reason to create these other other channels um and try and migrate your audience from one to the other not not, not move them but actually have them in both because yeah. we know the internet is a fickle place and uh, what is popular today might not be popular tomorrow. And if you've got your audience contained in, in several buckets, then you get to keep those conversations going regardless of the ebbs and flows of the internet. And you will also, we, we call uplift, you will get, you will generate more audience by by having that, that presence. Um, so yeah, so d discussing kind of growth versus engagement, I definitely think like growing an audience is absolutely one of the hardest jobs in games. I've said it before. Um, if particularly for a small studio or a brand new IP, starting out from scratch is one of the most difficult jobs um, to, to have to do. Um, and somebody who's really good at that are the folks at No More Robots. Um, particularly if going back to their early, I think I think Descenders was one of the first games they did. And Mike Rose, who runs No More Robots, which is a small indie publisher. Um, their, one of their first titles, Descenders, and, and I can remember reading a thread, I couldn't find it, but I remember reading a thread at the time where he basically said, yeah, when we announced, I sat on social and I replied to every single person that messaged on any channel, and it was just putting in the legwork, doing the hours, uh, doing the reps, um, <laughs> and, and it worked. Um, you know, they, they built their audience, they, they grew their, their community, uh, and actually it's not it wasn't a case of oh we put something out there and the audience appeared that was real hard work that's gone into it and um yeah no, i think that 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 is admirable and people need to be aware that that's kind of what you've got to do and, and often it can take a long time as well yeah uh and and it, so what's interesting with both of them is their use of discord um, which i think we've, we've mentioned before as well but they've heavily relied on discord and they've used discord to uh, so graduate from this growth phase to this engagement phase and they've actually made uh, a game or an, an additional experience out of the presence on discord uh, which is a big thing we've talk, talked about it before um but really the the beauty of that is you have now captured your audience your aunt uh you know on, on more perhaps the more broadcast type channels you're putting messaging out there and you're waiting for people to consume it in discord they are a member of your discord they are a member of your your channel um your server and yeah, you can really, you get an extra extra uh, layer of engagement when you've got that. And if you've got an active community there, it's really appealing to people who sort of brush, brush by and see it. If there's conversation going on. If there's fun and games happening, that's, that will, that's a really sticky uh, approach to community. So yeah. this, this led to my curiosity about community growth. And I went down a rabbit hole um, and I was looking at Twitter and I was looking at different size accounts. And I inadvertently stumbled across a game of the Price is Right. Is it Price is Right? Maybe the, 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 you know, the higher or lower. Higher or lower, yeah. And, and I was curious about, okay, there's there's kind of an explosive growth moment and then there's maintaining and, and continuing your audience. So I was just curious and looking at a few accounts and what I thought um, we could do is take a look at some accounts and you can see whether their their growth velocity is higher or lower than the previous one that we talk about. Okay, I'm ready to play. So I started off, I just had a look on Screenshot Saturday, which is a hashtag on Twitter where game developers share progress on what they're working on. And I just found the, the, the highest ranking Screenshot Saturday tweet at the time of searching, which was by a chap called Richard Lems, who's got a game called Mighty Goose that's been released somewhat recently, available on Steam. Check that okay. out. He had a, 
an animated video of a goose driving a submarine uh, because you know the, the internet and games love goose geese yeah i think i've seen this one so that's our starting point and richard lems uh r.i lem twit on twitter has a uh, healthy 13,581 followers at the time of checking this, which was earlier today. So over the past two weeks, I'm using a tool called Social Blade, which tells you over the past two weeks what their follower growth is. And I'll, gi I'll give you this one for free. Over the past uh, 30 days, daily average increase in followers is plus seven. Okay. So that's that's sort of somewhat impacted by this recent successful uh, screenshot Saturday tweet and yep. a healthy foundation of thirteen thousand. So I was then okay. What's maybe kind of in a similar realm? While well, I'm aware of a game that's hit Game Pass, been released and hit Game Pass recently, Sable. Uh, yes, familiar with the game. I'm familiar with Sable. We've actually featured Sable on the show before. We talked. We played the demo. Right. Yes. So Sable was released recently, released on Game Pass, uh, and. So an interesting point of discussion as well. Uh, this is a personal account like the previous one, Richard Lems. This is uh, Gregorius Kithriotis. Apologies for absolutely <laughs> murdering his name there. Shedworks Greg on Twitter. Should have yeah. just gone with that. Let's just call him Greg from Shedworks. Greg from Shedworks. Uh, so they've they've opted for personal accounts. Well, I think they've got a, a Shedworks mm -hmm. uh, team account. It's just a, a, a two-man band. It's um, Greg and Dan from Shedworks. Uh, but he has uh, 58,000 followers. So over the past two weeks, would you envisage that his daily follower growth is more or less than plus seven daily average? I'm going to say higher. You're going to say higher. Shedworks Greg's average follower growth over the past two weeks, plus 51. Whee! So... On average, his account is growing by 51 followers per day, which is quite a healthy, quite a healthy uh, increase, I would say. But obviously, that's kind definitely of accelerated by the the recent release of of Sable. Yes, by all accounts, a great game that people should check out if they like introspective and uh, unusual titles. Yeah, definitely uh, very visually uh, different and uh, stunning. So, moving on. So far, you're one for one. Well done. Another another game that is close to our hearts uh, has had some DLC drop recently. Do you want to guess the game? I'm going to guess that it's Outer Wilds. Very good. And again, they, there isn't an Outer Wilds specific social account, but the Mobius Games social media account. Uh, they've got 21,000 followers. They're not hugely active on, on Twitter for considering how significant uh, the game was. Um, but they've just dropped their DLC. Uh, so... Then past two weeks, Mobius Games, recent DLC dropped, more or less growth than Shedworks Greg with an average of 51. What do you think? I'm going to say lower for this one. It is 38, so you are correct. <laughs> Here we go. I'm good at my job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your job is to predict follower growth. Yeah, um, one of uh, many things that I do. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, very good, two for two. Right, let's move on. Another uh, game close to our hearts, perhaps a slightly different uh, level of, um, of public awareness, Saints Row. Mm, so the reboot announced recently, um, so as part of Gamescom, they dropped a new trailer and released a reboot of Saints Row. We had Dan from Deep Silver on the show a few weeks ago. Uh, yeah, lots of lots of uh, fanfare and opinion going around about the these new saints. Um, so they have a, a an IP account. So this is at Saints Row. One hundred and fifty two thousand followers at the time of me checking this. Past two weeks, what do we reckon? Higher or lower than the plus thirty eight from Mobius? I reckon it's difficult because I think Saints is probably quite high by default. Um, but from a growth perspective, 51 a day is high. It's really high. So I'm going to say we're comparing it to, to 38, right? Uh, 38, yeah. 51 was Shedworks. Was Shed right? Sable. 38 was Mobius. Out of Wilds. I think it's going to be higher. You are correct. 
we've got Saints Row with an average daily growth rate of 266 followers per day. So they wow. are really, okay, yeah, really rocketing at the moment. That's big. So now we're up in the upper echelons of big brands. I thought, well, what's one of the biggest brands I can think of? Uh, and I fell on Call of Duty. 4.3 yep. million followers. Uh, and yeah, obviously an absolute monster of a brand there. So that compared to Saints Row, 266, Call of Duty, daily follower growth, what do we what do we think? Higher or lower? Uh it's tricky because I mean their following is gonna be massive, but I also expect that um, I can hear you clicking, are you cheating? No, I'm not cheating. I'm changing the background video for the folks at home oh, so they okay. can see the okay. games we're talking about. Right. I'm actually messing it up massively. Apologies to the folks at home for all the <laughs> weird transitions. Uh, I think Call of Duty is going to be really naturally high, and it's probably always high. So you're going higher? Uh, I'm going to say lower, but I don't feel good about it. Final answer? Yeah, go on. I've got to get one wrong at some point. Have not got one. Yes. Call of Duty's growth is 205 at the moment. Not as not as rapidly growing as Saints Row. And, and yeah, much much bigger account, but yeah, low, lower growth. I'm checking. Uh, right. So another hugely popular game, but going back into smaller smaller, uh, you know, more in the indie sphere. But another favourite of ours, Hades. Again, they don't have a Hades account. Super Giant Games, this is at Super Giant Games. 319 followers. Uh, past two weeks, daily average follower growth. Higher or lower? I mean, I, I love Hades. I think it's one of the best games to come out in the last few years. But there can be no way, surely, that that is punching above Call of Duty on Twitter at any point. Um, so I think I'm going to have to say that Hades is going to be lower. Yen, you're correct. You're going through the board. They're still still impressive. 140 daily follower increase for yeah. Hades. They've um, recently launched on Xbox. They've had a new physical release recently, I think, as well. So there are things in their favour, and it's a fantastic game. But yeah, really good game. They've picked up all the awards um, and a well deserved, yeah, sort of steady steady follower growth. But yeah, still not 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 to that of. Quality. Call of Duty, but equally kind of says, says how impressive the Saints growth at the moment is. Mm. Um, so yeah, 140 for Supergiant Games at the moment. Um, okay, keeping it thematic uh, and close to our hearts. Uh, good friend Sean Murray, No Man's Sky. Ooh. Uh, al always uh, a hot topic. Um, there's always, always an update uh, recently or soon to come from no Man's Sky. We had an update in the past couple of weeks. Yeah. Uh, so Super Giant Games, 140 daily average. Sean Murray no, at No Man's Sky. <laughs> I mean, we're, this is a little bit insider trading because we obviously we work with Hello. <laughs> so we, uh, yeah, we do, but I'm assuming you're not keeping tabs <laughs> on Sean's follower growth count on a daily basis. So I'll, uh... I might be. Um, <laughs> I feel like this, I feel like it's going to be close. I'm surprised Hades was as high as it was. I thought Hades would probably be in the Sable region. Um, and No Man's Sky has been around for a while. The update will have brought in new people. I'm going to say No Man's Sky is lower growth than Hades. You are incorrect. Oh, no. <laughs> You've stumbled. My streak. <laughs> Your streak is the streak is dead. So yeah, super giant, 140 daily average growth at No Man's Sky, 238 wow. daily average growth, which is um, for a game of that age, it's incredible. Yeah, yeah, that's very surprising. So I thought I'd throw that curveball in there. Although I had a couple of curveballs that you you'd mastered so far. So yeah, I'm glad, <laughs> I'm glad, I'm glad we got you to trip up. You once finally again. stumped me. Uh, and. Two, two left. So we've got two left okay. to go. Hit so me. You, you've, you've got more right than you'll have got wrong already. Um, absolute biggest brand I could come up with. Uh, EA Sports FIFA. Mm. 
So uh, four million, uh, eight point five million followers. Daily average growth. I'm gonna say higher. You are correct. One thousand seven hundred ninety-seven followers per day. I tell you what, though, all of those FIFA followers—they're just bots on Twitter who are trying to sell you FIFA Ultimate <laughs> Ultimate Team packs. Right, quite possibly. <laughs> okay, final round. Final round. Just to tie tie this all off, go full circle. The Among Us Twitter account uh, okay. that we know went to one million in one month. Uh, obviously, that was a while ago. Uh, me see what you uh what do you think compared to fifa which is 1797 i can't imagine hours. anything i mean i feel like that fifa number's got to be if not the highest one of the absolute highest in the business right now so uh, i'm gonna have to say lower okay you are correct bonus round to to the How nearest <laughs> so yeah what, what do you reckon it is i reckon among us still does all right i reckon they're probably at about 150. It is currently sat at minus 29. Wow, okay, it's shrink actually <laughs> so shrinking. It's actually shrinking, yeah, uh, wow. which was surprising. Um, so, yeah, there everyone's, we go. Everyone's bored of the memes now. They're like, give me a new yeah, meme. That's it, they're all moved over to... I don't know, I don't know what's, what's the current... What's a new meme? We're too old for this, Dan. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what's the, what are the kids playing these days? I don't know. But seemingly, it's not among us. All the kids oh. are streaming Lil Nas X's new album, Montero. Check it out. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. That was our game of higher or lower uh, in the social media community management version. Awesome. Uh, did you did you enjoy that, Adam? That was great. And I hope the folks in the chat were playing along. Uh, I'll check the chat logs and see if anyone did well. I don't think anyone would have done as well as I did because I, quite frankly, did an amazing job there. You did, you did much better than I uh, anticipated. <laughs> I was, I was rooting for you. Mm. Well, that was great. Thank you very much for your insights and opinions on the world of community, Dan. Uh, 